Hello and welcome to Clavy News Dex. We are reaching you live from Nigeria's capital city, Abuja. I am Imefono Kun. The Senate this Tuesday, May 28, recalled Senator Abdul Ninki from a three month suspension. Ninki, representing Bauchi Central on the platform of the People's Democratic Party, PDP, was on March 12 suspended for three months by the Senate for claiming during a BBC House of Service interview that the National Assembly passed 2024 appropriation bills. He also alleged that the 2024 budget was padded to the tune of 3.7 trillion naira. The Senate had rejected the allegation, saying the amount was meant for statutory transfers to federal government institutions on first-line charge. However, the suspension was lifted this Tuesday following the consideration and adoption of a motion titled Motion for the Unconditional Recall of Senator Abdul Ninki, sponsored by the minority leader Abba Moro, PDP Benue South. Meanwhile, President Bola Tinibu will address the joint session of the National Assembly on Wednesday to mark the 25 years of unbroken democracy and legislation in Nigeria. Clerk of the National Assembly, Sani Tambuwao, in a statement said the President would commission the newly built library complex in the National Assembly. The drama in the Kano Emirates Tozo continued on Monday as both the deposed Emir Amino Ado Bayero and the reinstated Emir Muhammadu Sanusi II received district heads in separate palaces. Last week, Friday, Governor Ba Yusuf signed a law dissolving the additional Emirates created by the previous administration of Abdullahi Kanduje and reinstated Muhammadu Sanusi II as the Emir. Meanwhile, a high court in Kano State has ordered Bayero to stop parading himself as the Amy of Kano and also directed the police to evict him from the mini palace at the state road. The court, presided over by Justice Amina Adamu Aliyu, gave the order on Monday. This legal tussle followed a federal high court ruling last Thursday which restrained the reinstatement of Mamadou Sanusi II as the Amy of Kano and suspended the law establishing the dissolved five emirates in the state. The Senate this Tuesday passed the National Anthem Bill 2024 to revert to the old national anthem, Nigeria We Held Thee. The bill, which speedily passed first and second readings on Thursday, now awaits assent into law by President Bola Ahmed Tenibu. The Senate passed legislation to swap the national anthem from Arise O Compatriot to Nigeria We Held Thee. The old anthem, composed when Nigeria gained independence on October 1, 1960, will replace the current anthem. The bill seeks to revive the anthem that was dropped in 1978 during Olushogun Obasanjo's military administration. Journalists have been advised to be selfless in the discharge of their duties. The chief executive officer of Clavy Television, Sam Odionbelo, reiterated this at the day two capacity building workshop organized by Clayview Television in partnership with the Wallace Showing Center for Investigative Journalism and the MacArthur Foundation this Tuesday in Abuja. Clayview Zion Kiang was there and I'll tell us more. Speaking on the topic, factors militating against effective reportage, the chief executive officer of Clayview Television, Sam Odiong Bello, said journalists must always see themselves as solution providers and be focused on the discharge of their primary assignment. He faulted the fact that journalism is fast becoming an all-commerce affairs, a situation that negates the ethics of the noble profession and should be addressed forthwith. Journalism is now an all-commerce affair. Even with the introduction of uh, the revolution of the social media. Anybody who has Android, even the one that is not as qualitative as Android, will just take a photograph and the photograph will find its way to social media. You are already a journalist. And even we that are even so-called core journalists, we even give that journalism appellation to even people who are not journalists. Make yourself useful. Be ready to be useful to your organization first. Be able to, your number one, when you were employed, your number one 
assignment in your organization is to be a solution provider. When you are selfish, you will not move forward. When you are selfish, you will never move forward. The lead program officer of the investigative reporting, Nten Ekbang, also gave an elaborate pitching techniques to be able to carry out effective investigative reports. Okay, so key elements of a pitch, things you need to understand. So there is the story idea, there is the one-line summary of the story, there is a location of the story, there's a synopsis of the story, a treatment plan. How do you intend to do it? Are you, are you, are you doing um, an undercover? Are you doing a personal uh, profile? Are you doing... So there's a treatment plan, there's a scope, and then there is source mapping. So these are key elements. We'll talk about them individually that you need to you know, have in a piece. So Some participants shared their experience about the training and how it has repositioned them for the task of carrying out investigative reporting. I've been... A journalist for many years. I've not really been into investigative journalism, so to say. But after having listened for these few days, I think I am ready. I just learned that investigative journalism does not just give impacts, but it brings it leads to action. Well, the take home is that uh, journalists should show brown envelope and do their job uh, diligently. Uh, brown envelope has hampered uh, the uh, media uh, space. People go to do their job instead of uh, reporting diligently. They prefer to take brown envelope to stifle reports. I implore every journalist to do the needful because uh, in a society where you underplay the role of a journalist, I tell you, the society will suffer for it. I've learned particularly that there are some uncovered uh, truth that need to be covered. But in ignorantly, we were not uh, told or we haven't had the knowledge of how to uncover it. But in the course of this training, we've learned so many things and I didn't intend to miss even one day out of it. So it has been impactful till this minute. The three-day training is expected to help prepare journalists for the task of investigating corrupt practices, especially in government circles, and bringing corrupt officials to book. Zion Gyang reporting for Clearview News. Former Real Madrid and Manchester United star Cristiano Ronaldo has broken the record for the most goals in a Saudi Pro League season after striking for the 34th and 35th time in Al Nasser's final game of the campaign Ronald struck in first half stoppage time and again in the 69 minutes with a harder as El Nasser defeats El Itad 4-2 at home on Monday. Ronaldo is the most capped player in men's international football with 206 appearances and has scored a record 128 goals. Music